You guys remember when I said something about the graphics in this HP pre-built being about the same as a GT 1030? Y'all thought I was kidding, didn't you? All right, so uh, we got all, got ourselves a hold of a gigabyte two or um, gigabyte brand. 2 gig of DDR5 1030, GT 1030. Now you guys have often heard me say, or often heard me claim that the integrated graphics in the HP pre-built or on the 4600G are very, very close to what a GT 1030 would be. Well, there's, there's a little bit of a caveat there. There's two different types of GT 1030. This one happens to be the, five, the DDR5 2 gigabyte version. And we are gonna go ahead and test the DDR4 version, but that's a different video, so coming up. Uh, but yeah, this, this little thing might look familiar, and yes, my finger is fine, by the way. Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, if you wanna know what happened to my finger, you're gonna to have to watch the last video where we discussed this. Anyway, so uh, we, did, we ran a couple of tests, just to make sure and just to find out. And uh, you know, it, it kinda of speaks for itself. Now, there's a couple of things we'll go over here. We'll, we'll start, like we always do, with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can see these are very, very close. The 1030 just barely ekes it out. I mean, just barely. It's, uh, it's very close, but just barely. Um, Borderlands 3, we're looking very much the same story. Uh, no problems at all. It ran pretty smoothly, and especially, I, I would say definitely playable on 720p or maybe even 900p. Uh, Dirt 5, again, we a little bit of an anomaly with Dirt 5. We, we still have some hiccups with Dirt 5, even though it seems that the memory and, and everything runs okay. It just, uh, there, there's, I don't know, there's something about this card and Dirt 5 that don't get along very well. And then when we run Far Cry 5, uh, we're back to the same story. It's just a little bit, you know, give and take or whatever, just a little bit. Uh, better than the graphics, the integrated graphics there in the HP pre-built. Now, the one thing that we did run into a little bit of thing here, and I'll show you with uh, CSGO, our uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, is I ran into a situation by this time I have been testing, and Far Cry 5 did this a little bit to me, and CSGO was very noticeable. Uh, when I went to run, by the time I got to these two tests, I had to let the machine cool off a little bit because even though it said it was around 50, 55, 58 degrees, the heat made a difference in the performance. So that by the time I got to these tests, when I did get here, you could see that the, the performance on, the, uh, on CSGO was cut down to like 49 frames per second. And when I first thought, saw that, I'm like, no way, this thing was getting you know, close to 100 when I had it in the Dell. Now, keep, I, in the Dell, I ran everything back to back. I ran it like a scalded dog, didn't have any problems at all. It did have a problem in the HP, and I don't know why, because it's even got some extra airflow with the fan that I put in here when I was testing the other. Uh, so um, I, I don't know why that is, but I, I went ahead and let it cool off a little bit. I went back to it and I tested, and sure enough, right back to 93 frames per second. Same thing I was getting in the Dell and uh, everything is all hunky-dory again. Uh, Far Cry 5, the same thing. I, I got those test results that I showed you on Far Cry 5 are actually what I went back and tested after the machine cooled down a little bit. So uh, now normal testing or normal playing, you might not ever run into that, but I'm sitting here for a couple hours at a time. I mean, just running back-to-back -back tests because it's the only way I can get an average. It's the only way I can get a good idea of, of what it's going to be if you, I mean, you run the poor sucker to the ground. So it does make a di big difference. The more heat soaked this GT 1030 gets, the worse performance it's going to have. It was still fairly playable, but by the time I was running the benchmarks on here, I did get down into a neighborhood that, I mean, it was, it was much worse than the integrated graphics ever showed me when I was doing the same type of testing. I used the same methodology every time, and it was even worse than it was in the Dell when I was doing the same way. So uh, that's just something to think about. If you guys do end up somehow, some way, finding a GT 1030, there's a couple things to be advised. There's a couple things to, to know. Uh, it is a slimline. It does not take an external power, which is fine. It doesn't eat up a lot of power. It is two gig of it's two gig of memory but we're going to get to that point in a second she does perform worse the hotter she gets i don't care what the temps on msi afterburner say 
the more she heats up or the longer she's been heat soaked like that, it might say 63 degrees. But if you, you know, if you go to touch or put your fingertip on that heat sink, I don't care if it says 63 degrees and it feels hot, hot, um, then your performance is suffering already. And, and it didn't do that in the Dell, but it does do that in the HP. So I thought that was very strange. Um, okay, getting back to the, the little caveat I was talking about and this card here. This is the DDR4 version. Now we didn't test the DDR4 version in this. Well, come to think, I did, but that's for a different video. These two cards, same manufacturer, almost look identical. There's a couple of differences. One, you can just barely tell that some of the caps or some of the capacitors are in different spots and the labels. And these are both gigabyte cards. The other thing that I found really, really interesting this is the DDR4 box. This is the DDR5 box. It even comes from the same store. So when these got ordered, they eventually they originally came from the same the same uh, I guess distributor you could call it. I don't know if it's the same retail outlet, but at least the same distributor because it's got the same number and everything, the same retail number on here. And the boxes look almost identical. There's a couple things. This one says low profile 2G. This one actually says D4 on it. So be very careful. If you're looking at descriptions and you're trying to find a 1030 and think you've got a good deal, look again. Make sure it's not DDR4, that it is in fact DDR5. If it says just 2G or it's a 2 gigabyte, or if it says D5, uh, your, your chances are pretty good. It should say in the description, and it should be a little bit cheaper if it's a DDR4. Uh, it might just say D4, but look for something that you, says D5 or DDR5. Don't make the mistake. I've got two of them here. I wanted to test them and I'll show you guys what that looks like over the weekend. But um, as far as regular testing, yes, the graphics on the on this integrated graphics on this HP prebuilt, I can pretty much prove to you now, they're very, very similar to the DDR5 version of a GT 1030. So uh, if you guys found the video helpful, I mean, that's all I got this time. So if you found the video helpful, I appreciate it. If you go ahead and throw a like on it, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit me up on the other socials. Uh, stay tuned because we are going to take a look at these again, the DDR4 and the DDR5 to see how they do against each other. Spoiler alert, uh, you are half the man you used to be. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But until next time, until I get that video out for you guys to show you, I'll see you later.